Today we're embarking on a journey into the depths of the most recent scientific exploration on lifting weights to failure and its potential influence on muscle development. This incredibly engrossing topic has been garnering substantial attention among the fitness enthusiasts over time. As we delve into this topic, let's first clarify what we mean when we say lifting weights to failure. While many of you might have a rough idea, it's crucial to have a clear understanding. This term, lifting to failure, is a buzzword frequently echoed in the realm of health and fitness. Originally, it was a term coined by bodybuilders in the mid-20th century to describe the critical point in your workout regime when your muscles can no longer execute a particular exercise to its maximum potential. It's that instant when you're unable to perform another repetition with good form, despite your utmost efforts. This inability could stem from various factors, from muscle fatigue to a shortage of energy. Essentially, it's a physiological event where the muscle fibers are unable to generate the necessary force to lift the weight any longer. Training to failure has been a contentious issue in the industry for decades now. Its prevalence among fitness enthusiasts and professional athletes alike speaks volumes about its potential. Some argue that it's a potent method to trigger muscle growth and strength, while others maintain it can result in overtraining and injuries. Like any fitness strategy, it's important to approach it with a well-rounded perspective, considering your personal fitness objectives and physical abilities. So equipped with an understanding of the concept of training to failure, let's delve further into the topic. Recent studies, including those conducted by Dr. Smith and his team, as well as researchers like Dr. Taylor from the Clinical Journal of Sport Medicine and Dr. Williams from the European Journal of Applied Physiology, have spotlighted a captivating possibility. Published in acclaimed journals, they explore the potential of failure training as a tool to optimize muscle hypertrophy. This pool of research fundamentally shifts our comprehension of muscle growth and the role that high-intensity exercise plays in it. Dr. Smith's research, a comprehensive examination into the mechanisms of muscle growth, brings to light the physiological processes that underpin muscle hypertrophy. One of the pivotal findings of the study is the role of failure in recruiting a greater number of muscle fibers. The research explores how pushing your muscles to their limit could stimulate unprecedented muscle growth. This parallels findings from the Clinical Journal of Sport Medicine, where Dr. Taylor and his team found similar results in their study on failure training. Likewise, Dr. Williams's research published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology has also underscored the value of failure training. His studies have shown that high-intensity exercise that pushes muscles to the brink can lead to superior muscle fiber recruitment and subsequently enhanced muscle growth. However, these studies also highlight the vital need for balance. Intense training must be moderated with adequate recovery. It's a delicate equilibrium, a fine line to tread. Ignoring the need for recovery can result in overtraining, a condition that has been shown to hinder muscle growth. Hence, it's crucial to counterbalance this intensity with proper recovery measures to evade overtraining. The cumulative results of these studies lead us to an exciting premise. The potential advantages of pushing our physical boundaries during workout sessions. These findings have significant implications for both fitness enthusiasts and professional athletes. The concept of periodization is rooted in sports science history and is a crucial element of modern fitness training. This technique was first introduced by Eastern European scientists and coaches during the mid-20th century as a response to the need for a more systematic approach to training athletes. Since its inception, periodization has undergone numerous adaptations and transformations. Periodization, as it is known today, is a systematic approach to training involving careful planning and structuring of workout phases. It originated from the recognition that training should not remain static, but should evolve and adapt to the athlete's changing physiological needs and goals. Thus emerged the concept of dividing the training process into distinct, manageable cycles or phases, each catering to specific aspects of fitness. Each phase of periodization serves a particular purpose and contributes to the overall effectiveness of the training program. These phases typically include hypertrophy, strength, and peaking. The hypertrophy phase is dedicated to muscle growth, while the strength phase seeks to augment overall physical power. The peaking phase then prepares the trainee for optimal performance. The beauty of periodization lies in its flexibility. It has evolved over time to become highly adaptable, able to be tailored to an individual's strengths, weaknesses, and objectives. This dynamic nature of periodization is vital in maintaining consistent progress and preventing training stagnation. 
Moreover, periodization has proven instrumental in preventing fitness plateaus and reducing the risk of overtraining. It allows for progressive overload, the gradual increase of stress placed on the body during exercise. It also ensures adequate recovery, thereby minimizing the risk of overtraining. To optimize muscle stimulus while managing fatigue, aim for one. Two exercises to be trained to failure per week per muscle group. This is a helpful guideline that you can incorporate into your workout routine. To determine the optimal frequency of failure training, you can consider factors such as your current fitness level, your training goals, and the type of exercises you are performing. Such a strategy triggers a physiological response within your body, releasing a cascade of hormones like testosterone and growth hormone. Strategic workout planning will allow you to maintain a consistent state of muscle repair and growth. The key is moderation and understanding your body's response. By limiting this intense form of training to just one, two exercises per muscle group each week, you give your body the chance to recover, rebuild, and grow stronger. Let's illustrate with an example. Suppose you're working on your chest. These are large, complex muscles that can greatly benefit from training to failure. On Monday, you might choose to focus on a chest press exercise. You push yourself to do as many reps as you can with good form until you can't do any more. Then, instead of pushing to failure on a heavy compound exercise again the next chest day, you allow your muscles to recover. Then, on Thursday, you choose an isolation chest exercise, perhaps a fly or a cable crossover, and you train to failure again. This different exercise provides a new stimulus to the muscle, yet still promotes growth due to the physiological response triggered. To conclude, focus on failure training for your chest on Monday for one compound exercise and then again on Thursday for an isolation exercise, thereby allowing sufficient recovery time. This balance of exertion and rest, combined with understanding the science behind muscle growth, is the key to optimizing your workouts. Mike Israetel, a renowned sports scientist and the co-founder of Renaissance Periodization, has made a significant contribution to the sports science realm with his stance against training to failure, a perspective that is not to be treated lightly. His credentials and profound expertise in the field make him a credible authority on the matter. Israetel has dedicated a significant portion of his career to studying muscle and strength development, providing invaluable insights based on empirical research and personal experience. These insights serve as a practical guide for anyone dedicated to enhancing their personal fitness. According to Israetel, consistently pushing the body to its limits during workouts can be more harmful than beneficial. This view is supported by many other experts in the field who caution against the potential pitfalls of overtraining, including decreased motivation, compromised performance, and a heightened risk of injury. In place of this approach, Israetel advocates for a less intense but more sustainable method of training called progressive overload. This method prioritizes a gradual increase in the amount of stress the body is subjected to during workouts, which Israetel believes will lead to consistent fitness gains without the risks associated with overtraining. Alongside the progressive overload approach, Israetel emphasizes the importance of proper volume management in training. He proposes that a trainee should closely track the total amount of work completed in each training session to avoid overexertion. He sees intelligent programming as a critical element of a successful workout routine. This implies meticulously planning workouts in a strategic way to amplify results while simultaneously minimizing the likelihood of injuries. Israetel suggests that relentless training to failure could escalate the risk of burnout and impede recovery. It is therefore crucial for individuals who wish to have a healthier, more sustainable fitness journey to pay heed to Israetel's warnings and advice and follow a training strategy that focuses on smart, not merely hard work. Let's dive deeper into a sample chest workout. This routine is designed to optimize muscle growth and strength with compound movements as the main focus. Our first exercise is the bench press. The weight you choose should be challenging, but manageable. It should bring you about two, four reps short of failure. Depending on your total volume goals for the week, you may want to do two to five sets of this exercise with no more than two sets to failure. Next, we'll transition to an isolation exercise such as flies, with most if not all sets to failure. It's important to avoid the temptation of training to failure in each session. While it might feel like you're pushing your limits and maximizing growth, the truth is, this approach might actually lead to muscle fatigue, burnout, and increased risk of injury. The key to successful muscle growth and strength is consistent, gradual progression, not reckless intensity. 
Dr. Brown's research in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine sounded an alarm on the dangers of excessive failure training, a practice that can significantly stifle performance and recovery. However, this fact often lies unnoticed amidst the fitness enthusiasts. The study brings to fore the potential pitfalls of overtraining, an aspect frequently ignored in the quest for superior performance and results. Dr. Brown's study insists that excessive failure training could be damaging to the body's innate recovery process, thwarting progress and possibly resulting in long-term harm. Astonishingly, numerous athletes in their quest to stretch their limits, neglect to factor in appropriate rest and recovery periods in their regimen. This is precisely the juncture the juncture where the concept of failure training assumes significance, a concept which requires a thorough comprehension and a strategic inclusion in any fitness schedule. Moreover, another research published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology found that overtraining can lead to a decrease in both aerobic and anaerobic endurance. A real-life example of this is seen in the case of marathon runners who, after a certain point, begin to see a decline in their performance due to lack of adequate recovery time. Instead of weaving in failure training into every workout, Dr. Brown advises a more thoughtful strategy. This would entail reserving the bulk of failure training for the concluding weeks of a training cycle right before you deload. This approach permits the body sufficient time to recuperate and adapt, thereby ensuring that your performance does not dwindle and your hard work bears fruit without inflicting unnecessary stress on your system. Also, active recovery techniques into your regimen is highly endorsed. Methods such as foam rolling stretching may appear basic, but they can significantly propel muscle recovery. These methods function by boosting circulation, alleviating muscle tension, and fostering improved mobility. This not only facilitates speedier recovery but also readies your body for the ensuing training session. Sleep is yet another crucial factor in recovery. It is during this phase that the body executes most of its repair and regeneration work. Assuring that you're clocking in seven, nine hours of sleep each night is not merely about feeling invigorated, it's about providing your body the rest it requires to recuperate and heal. As we wrap up let's run through once again what we have discussed today. Fitness isn't a mere goal or objective, it's a lifestyle choice. By tuning into our channel you are not only tapping into a source of well-researched and scientifically backed fitness advice but also becoming a part of a community dedicated to leading a healthier, fuller life. In the vast fitness universe we serve as your compass, pointing you towards what works and steering you clear of unproven tactics. So like, comment and subscription fuels our resolve to continue this quest. It gives us the motivation to sift through the clutter and handpick the best fitness strategies for you. Your thoughts, your feedback, your ideas and suggestions are the building blocks of our channel. So, before we sign off, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And remember, every step you take is a step closer to your fitness goals. Let's embark on this journey together. Be proactive, stay engaged. Remember, it's not just about watching, it's about evolving together.